Today we're doing video two, which is adding and subtracting when you have unlike denominators or you have unlike fractions. So we got to go back to arithmetic and discuss how does one add two fractions that have a different denominator. So let's go and look at an example from arithmetic. If I wanted to add a half plus a third, the problem is we cannot add these fractions right now. They are not alike. These denominators are different numbers. That means they're cut into different size pieces. So visually speaking, if we drew a picture, if I start with a whole circle and I only want half a circle, that's what I'm looking at. And if I have a third, I'm starting with a whole circle, I'm cutting it into three equal pieces, and I only have one. And the question is visually, can I take this half a circle and add it to this third of a circle? And it's obvious, I cannot. They're not the same size. They are not alike. They physically do not look the same. So what happens is we learn a rule. Adding fractions easy as can be, all you need is an LCD. We need a least common denominator. LCD is the same thing as an LCM from third grade. LCM stood for lowest or least common multiple. LCD is the same concept, we're just using a D because now the numbers are in the denominator. I need a number that two and three have in common on their times tables. So if you go through the two times tables, you would say two, four, six, eight, ten, dot, dot, dot. If you were going through the three times tables, three, six, nine, twelve, dot, dot, dot. The number that they have in common that's the lowest is six. Now, how does that relate to the picture? What you're asking somebody to do is take this cake that's a circle, this cake that's a circle, and cut them up into the same number of pieces that will all be equal. And I could take a cake that's cut in thirds and cut each of these thirds, and now I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, and they're all the same size. Same thing here. I could take this circle that's cut in two pieces and also cut it into six pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's what the LCD is. It's showing you physically you could cut these holes into the same number of pieces. But now look, do we just have one piece shaded in? No. If we cut this circle into six slices, now we have one, two, three shaded in. So that represents the fraction three, six. And if you look here, now that the circle's cut into six equal slices, we have two of these pieces shaded. So now we have two six. But now we can add. So we're going to do a lot of work today because the first concept is to add fractions, you have to learn how to get the right denominator, the lowest common denominator. We're going to spend some time on that. After you learn how to get the lowest common denominator, then you've got to learn if you change the denominators, you're changing the numerators. That denominator was 2, you change it to 6, so you change the numerator. That denominator was 3, you change it to 6, so we're going to have to change the numerator. So we're going to have to learn how to make also equivalent fractions. After you learn those two concepts, how to get an LCD, how to make equivalent fractions, now you're back to where we left off. Write the bottom, collect the top, 3 plus 2 is 5, and then see if you can reduce that, which we can. not So we're going to do a couple of things today. So the major concept is you can only add fractions if they have a what? An LCD. So let's go to the class notes. Because the LCD is the hardest part. Okay? To get a least common denominator, we've got to learn the correct way to do it. Now, I know most of you can look at the denominator of 2 and 3 and come up with 6 in your head. But we've got to talk about how we're going to do this in algebra. And the way we're going to do this in algebra is the way you should have learned how to do this in arithmetic. So we're going to talk about some denominators that you can't just look at and get in your head, the LCD. We're going to learn the correct procedure how to get an LCD so you can see how it relates to algebra. So let's look at this example here. I have the fractions 1 over 48 and 1 over 72. And I know as well as you do, you do not know the least common denominator of 48 and 72 off the top of your head. 
So I'm going to show you how to get that LCD. Okay, there's two ways. The long way to do it would be to sit here and list the multiplication tables of 48 and list the multiplication tables of 72. So you do 48 times 1, 48 times 2, 48 times 3, 48 times 4, 71 times 1, 71 times 2, 71 times 3, until you hit a number they had in common. Well, that's crazy. That takes too much time. The correct way to get an LCD is to use your factoring skills to learn to factor. So if we go back to third grade, I'm going to show you how to get the LCD here. You're going to factor each of the denominators. So how can we factor 48? Well, I know 48 is 4 times 12. But is that in lowest terms? No, because 4 could be factored into 2 times 2. Is that in lowest terms? Yes, because 2 are prime. So we can't factor anymore there. But 12 is not prime. 12 could be 2 times 6. 2 is prime. But 6 is not prime. 6 is 2 times 3. So what you learned is, 48 can be rewritten. I'll write it up here. 48 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now we're going to do the same thing with 72. 72, I know my facts. That's 8 times 9. 8 is not prime. 8 is 2 times 4. 2 is prime. 4 is not. 4 is 2 times 2. 9 is not prime. 9 is 3 times 3. So if you look, we can now rewrite 72. 72 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And when I listed all those prime numbers, I listed them underneath the ones that are the same. Now, how does this help us get the least common denominator? If you look to get the least common denominator, you don't want to just have what they have in common. You want to have the most of every prime number. It's kind of like picking apples. This is my factor tree of apples, and this is your factor tree of apples. And we're making an apple pie, and we want to have the most apples possi possible. Now, I'm not saying take all the apples. I'm not saying taking all these prime numbers. That doesn't get you the least common denominator. I'm saying who has the most of every prime. This tree has four twos. This tree has three twos. Who has more? This three tree. So we want all four twos. And if you make these columns, that's what you're doing. You're bringing down all these twos. Then you would look. This tree has one three. This tree has two threes. I don't want to have all three of them. I want to who has the most. They have the most, two threes. And if I bring down the columns, that's what's happening. So now when I multiply all this together, this would be my least common denominator. So two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. Three times three is nine. And 16 times nine is 144. That is the smallest number 48 and 72 have in common. I'll prove it to you. 48 times 1 is 48. 48 times 2 is 96. 48 times 3 is 144. Then if I do the 72 times tables, 71, 72 times 1 is 72. 72 times 2 is 144. There's the first number they have in common. So the rule of thumb is the correct way to find the least common denominator is all the denominators have to be in lowest terms. They have to be factored. Once they're factored, you compare and you take the most of all the prime terms, the prime numbers. So now we're going to try that with algebra. Okay, I know this is a difficult concept, but it goes back to arithmetic. So now if you look at example two, I have 3 over 4a, 2 over 3a, and 1 over 6a. And before I could ever add or subtract these fractions, I need the least common denominator. So again, the first question to ask yourself is, are these denominators in lowest terms? So you can do a factor tree with these, just like you would do with arithmetic. 
4 is not in lowest terms. 4 is 2 times 2. But A is in lowest terms. You can't break down in the letter A. So 4A is really 2 times 2 times A. Okay, we're going to do 3A. 3 is in lowest terms. It's prime. A is in lowest terms. So that tree is factored in lowest terms. It's 3 times A. 6A. 6 is not low in lowest terms. It's 2 times 3. A is in lowest terms. So 6A is really 2 times 3 times A. Once you get all the denominators factored in lowest terms, then to get the LCD, you want to take the most of every prime term. That's for numbers and also variables. If you want to line them up, it's easy to see. There's 2 times 2 times A. I got to line up 3 times A. Well, wait, I got to leave a spot for the 3. So let me move the A down more. So there's the 3 times the A. And then 6 is 2 times 3 times A. So if you line them up in columns, then all you have to do is drop the columns. You'll have the LCD because, look, you want the most of every prime. Two twos, no twos, one two. Who's got the most? The two twos. Here's the column. There's a two. There's the column. There's a two. No threes, one three, one three. They each have one three. We don't want both of them. We just want the most, which is one three. 1A, 1A, 1A. They all have the same amount. It doesn't matter which tree you take it from. We all need 1A. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 12A. Your LCD would be 12A. So that's how you're going to get a least common denominator. You're going to factor your denominators into primes and then take the most of every prime term. Let's try another one. Let's look at our notes at example four. You have x over x plus one and two over three x. So before we can do any adding of these fractions, we need a common denominator. So this denominator is x plus one. The first question is, is it in lowest terms or will it factor? This is connected by addition. So we have to use our factoring skills. Is there a GCF? Is it difference of perfect squares? Is it a trinomial? It's none of these. This is in lowest terms. That's as small as that denominator can go. It cannot be reduced. The other denominator is 3x. This is connected by multiplication. So we can separate it. Is 3 in lowest terms? Yes, it is. Is x in lowest terms? Yes, it is. So if you look to get the LCD here, this is just x plus 1. And that's got to stay together. This denominator is really 3 times x. So if you look for to make the LCD of this denominator, you have to take the most of every prime piece. When you're doing algebra, your LCD can have it in a number by itself, a variable by itself, and something in parentheses. And if you look, that's what you have here. We have the number by itself, 3. We have a variable by itself, x. And we have something that's connected that can't come apart. That's why it's in parentheses. We have x plus 1. So that LCD would be 3x times x plus 1. Now, I know that's a hard concept, but you've got to understand. All we're doing is looking at our denominators. First of all, making sure they're in lowest terms. They're all prime, as low as they can go. And once they're as low as they go, we have to take the most of every prime piece. There's only a 3. We need it. There's a letter X here. We need it. And we need this that's stuck together, an X plus 1. So we're not looking to see what they have the same. We're taking the most of every prime. Let's look at it one more example in your notes. Let's look at example 5. So again, if you look, we're trying to learn how to get the correct way to get a least common denominator. Here's your two fractions. You have 4 over a squared plus 5a plus 6 and 1 over 5a plus 15. Before I could ever ask you to add or subtract these, I've got to make these denominators the same. 
but these denominators are not in lowest terms. They can be broken down. They can be factored. This can be factored doing the trinomial rule, two parentheses. A times A. What can multiply to 6 and add to 5? 2 and 3. We're adding the signs have to be the same, so they both have to be positive. That's factored, lowest terms. We're going to factor 5A plus 15. That's the GCF rule. What do they have in common? A 5. What's left? A plus 3. So the first thing is just like with the 48 and the 72. To find the LCD, you get the denominators in lowest terms. You factor them. Then you take the most of every prime term. In algebra, it won't just be numbers that are prime. It will be variables. So if you look, do we have a number that's all by itself? Sure we do. We have a 5. So we need to have the 5. To get the LCD, we also have to look at the variables. Do we have a variable that's by itself, not connected to anything by adding or subtracting? No, we do not. That A is connected to something, that A is connected to something, that A is connected to something. So we don't have any letter A's by themselves. But then we have to take the parentheses. We don't want all the parentheses, we want the most. So I have an A plus 2, you do not. I need to have the A plus 2. You have an A plus 3, you, I have an A plus 3. We don't need both of them. We both have one of them, we need one. This is going to be your least common denominator. 5 times A plus 2 times A plus 3. And that's how it should be connected. An LCD is doing multiplication. So your denominator should always be connected by multiplication. You don't have to multiply that out anymore, and I'll explain why in the next video. So just remember, the hardest part about adding and subtracting fractions is to figure out the least common denominator. In algebra, you just can't do it in your head. It's not as easy as doing the LCD of 2 and 3 and saying 6. 2 and 3 can be done in your head because 2 and 3 are prime numbers. They're already in lowest terms, and the LCD is 6, 2 times 3. But if I give you the denominator of 48 and 72, if they're not prime, you have to reduce them. You have to get them in lowest terms. You have to factor them. So that's what we just did in algebra. To get an LCD, you factor the denominators, and then you take the most of every prime term. Okay, see you in the next video.